Today we're going to be talking about food. Specifically, Yucatecan food. So we're going to be talking about the food that's very typical of out here in Merida, Mexico. If you want to know more, just stay tuned to find out. Hey brother, so what's your favorite dish out here? Los panuchos? Really? I, I thought you were more of a sopa de lima kind of guy. Huh, I never would have thought, huh? Anyways guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Yucatecan cuisine. Let me see if I can get the lighting here correct. <laughs> but uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about Yucatecan cuisine, uh, the food of uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, as you guys already know, I live out here in Mexico and um, you know most of you guys already know of uh, Mexican food and uh, I'm sure some of you guys are fully aware that Taco Bell isn't really Mexican food and that Mexico is a humongous and vast country with lots of culture and definitely definitely lots of food culture we're gonna be talking about Yucatecan cuisine and the food out here now why am I making this episode? You know why I know why I'm making this episode? Because I actually made an episode, a walking and talking episode, just talking, and I'm, in fact, it was probably the episode right before this. So it's, I don't know when I'm, because I'm making a lot of episodes, and um, because I have like a bunch of things coming up, so I'm just trying to, you know, get things going. But anyways, regardless, I made an episode a couple days ago talking about, um, you know, food and culture out here and just the, the growing city, you know, just the growing pains of Merida, Mexico. And uh, what, I remember one of the things that I did touch on as I was making that video was about Yucatecan cuisine and the fact that I wasn't that much of a fan of the Yucatecan cuisine. And I'm not even going to lie to you, after I made that episode, I'm one of those guys, I don't like to edit myself at all. So after I made that episode, I said to myself, I was, I was, it was bothering me. It was literally bothering me every day. Like, man, I know I, I wasn't uh, too, oh, I know I was very harsh on the, Meri, on, the, on the Yucatecan cuisine that I've eaten out here in Merida. But um, the reality is, is that it's not that bad. And I feel like I'm misrepresenting the food out here. And um, just like the universe always works out, the food gods actually came up, you know, bestowed upon me a bunch of Yucatecan cuisine this weekend. And my God, you know, what did I eat my words or what? So I decided that before any one of you guys out there, especially any one of you locals, you know, decides to make me eat my own words. I was like, you know what? I'll eat my own fucking words and I'll just make a video, um, a short video. OK, because again, this video could go on for hours talking about just the food and the cuisine out here. But I'm going to try and make it as short as uh, I can for my standards, you know, talking about the food out here and the cuisine out here, because Again, guys, you know, I was quickly reminded this weekend um, as to how amazing the food is out here. Now, granted, the food out here is very, very different to a lot of parts of the world. Now, there's some, a lot of things that are very similar to, um, to a lot of the things that we're used to, depending on where you're from. But there is a lot of very unique foods out here that are, again, it was directly inspired by the Mayan people that used to live out here. So. Not everything is up to, you know, everyone's palate. But for example, there's a lot of influence out here from Europe, from Spain, from Cuba, from the Caribbean, from Afro descendants of Africa and, and that whole thing. And all, and you know, again, and then even more layers on top of that, which we're gonna discuss in a second, which literally create an amazing base for food out here. Now, the thing is that, a good majority of the food that is indigenous to here, again, we got to remember who were the original people here. You know what I mean? And so the food out here is literally, you know, all, you know, based off of, you know, the indigenous people that were here. So there's a lot of food that, you know, I wasn't a fan of and, and I get that, you know what I mean? But again, when I was, you know, um, introduced to the food again, even though I live out here, but I was, you know, uh, taken to a place where... I got, you know, to eat a lot of uh, the really good local food out here. I, I quickly got to realize, like, oh, man, you know what? The food out here is not only amazing, but it's amazing in its own set of uh, spectrums. You know, in its own set of uh, whatever. Um, because the thing is that even though we are in Mexico, uh, literally, this is Mexico, um, the food out here is so completely different from the rest of Mexico. 
And depending on where you are in Mexico, depending on the food, you know, because again, just like there's different, different, there's a lot of differences, you know, between the states in the U.S. and differences between countries in Europe and and even its own regions in each country in Europe. There's a there's going to be huge differences here in Mexico. So the food that you're going to be eating in in the, the border towns of Texas is going to be completely different than what you're going to be eating in the north of Texas. Even though it's going to be very closely similar because they're really close. But the further you get away from that, well, the, the more different. It's it's gonna be the food in Baja California is completely different than the, the the northern part of Texas I mean the northern part of Mexico that's close to Texas and same thing as the food in Tijuana as uh, as is the food in Veracruz and the food in Mexico City and the food in Oaxaca and the food in the Yucatan Peninsula and again just to add a little bit of uh, historical perspective to the food out here you know the you you know the Yucatan people in the Yucatan Peninsula and everything that is Yucatan, you know Yucatecan, you know was literally um, attached to Mexico just like 70 years ago, 60 years ago. Because up until then, it necessarily even though it was part of Mexico, it really wasn't part of Mexico. And the Yucatan Peninsula and the Yucatecan people, you know, they're more closely resembling uh, a Texan. You know, where you know how every single Texan literally says we're Texans first and then we're Americans? You know, then we belong to the United States of America? What's well, the same thing with Yucatecans? Yucatecans consider themselves Yucatecan first and foremost by any far stretch of the imagination and then they're Mexican. And the rest of Mexico also, you know, they consider Yucatecans, I don't want to say second class citizens, but they don't necessarily consider them full on Mexican. They, they, consider them Yucatecan. So there's already that, you know, disparity in, uh, in a big difference into how, you know, how the Yucatan Peninsula is to the rest of Mexico. Now, being in Mexico, there's a lot of dishes out here that are, you know, you're going to find everywhere, you know, so you're going to find mole. Now, of course, it's not going to be the best mole, but you're going to find really good mole out here, but it's not going to be, you know, like mole from the regions in which mole comes from. All right. You're going to find elotes and esquites and what are elotes and esquites you know that's the corn on the cob with the mayonnaise and the spices and all that shit and the one that comes in the cup that's the esquite you know you're gonna find those here you know you're gonna find uh desserts like the pan dulce you know like the little sweet breads that all mexicans eat you're gonna find tacos a pastor you're gonna find a lot of things you know what i mean the enchiladas you know and stuff like that but again when all of a sudden you come out here and you ask for a burrito it's like they give you a burrito and you're like what the fuck is this you know what I mean? It, it, it looks like a burrito. It kind of tastes like a burrito, but this ain't a burrito. You know, and there's a lot of things like that out here. You know what I mean? Like, um, I've met a lot of Mexicans that come from the north of Mexico, and they, they miss, you know, a lot of the Mexican food that, again, as an American or as uh, or, or, or other people out there that have experienced other Mexican food from, you know, especially the northern part, you're like, where, where's that food here? How come they don't have all these meats and all these uh, amazing tacos or, you know, these tortas, a torta is a sandwich, you know, these tortas ahogadas and, you know, so many things. But again, when you come out here and you go to the typical Yucatecan restaurant, you're like, oh, wow, this food you're not going to find in the rest of Mexico and you're going to find it here. And now from me, from my perspective where I'm Cuban and I'm Caribbean, there's a lot of food out here that they only eat here. And again, it's very closely resembling things that my grandma ate or things that you're going to find in Cuba or in the Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico as opposed to North Mexico. You know what I mean? So there's a lot more close, close resemblance to the Caribbean and Latin America, I mean in Central America here than there is to actual Mexico. So. You know, one of the one of the dishes out here that is uh, well known around the world, but it's, it's very very typical to this area is uh, ceviche. You know, ceviche comes from other parts of Latin America and especially in the Caribbean. And you know, there's a lot of variations of ceviche all over the world. But again, ceviche is a main dish out here because again, we're right on the Gulf of Mexico. You know what I mean? And so you know, right off the bat, ceviche is one is something that you're probably not going to find in Mexico City as an authentic dish, but it is an authentic dish here. All right. Now, there's a lot of things like, um, what's this uh, word? I forgot. I think it was, I want to say chaya, chaya. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, chaya, chaya. You know, that's like a plant that they love out here. And I don't know if it's also loved in the rest of Mexico, but I know that they love it out here. And now this plant in its raw form is like poison ivy. But when processed correctly, my goodness, it, it is one of the most, you know, refreshing drinks that you can find out here. Very unique flavor, very delicious. And they also use that, you know, as a, 
um, as a base for other dishes and things like that. Now, what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna start going down this list of a few of the dishes that I had this weekend that reminded me as to how awesome it is out here, all right? Now, one of the main dishes, one of my favorite dishes out here is la longaniza, okay? Longaniza de Valladolid, okay? So, let me say it again. La, la longaniza de Valladolid, so that's the sausage from Valladolid, but longaniza is just the way, is the name of this particular sausage. Now, this sausage is beyond amazing. I've had it several ways, but the only way that you can really have longaniza that's beyond great, that is like the most delicious thing ever, is you gotta grill this thing. So you grill this sausage, and once you grill the sausage and it's all nice and crispy and burnt, and you are about to you know, break into it, it crumbles. It's like, it's meat, it's all meat. In fact, I don't think it has much fat in it because that's why it crumbles so much, but it's like crumbly. You just get that crumbly meat and you put that shit in your taco, you put a little bit of bitter orange, a little bit of salsa, oh man, oh man, are you in heaven. And we had some extra longanisa left over and my girl, the next day for, for dinner, she got that longanisa and made it with eggs, just scrambled eggs, and I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm just thinking to myself, eh, you know, what, how good is this gonna be? It's just fucking eggs with the sausage, and like, ah, you know, she probably should've left the sausage alone. Bro, guys, was I mistaken? When she makes, when she made that scrambled eggs with the longanisa, oh my God, that shit took it to another level. It took that shit to another level. All right, now, granted, I like the longanisa on its own, but having it with eggs and the scrambled eggs, it, it's not like, it did not taste like scrambled eggs, it tasted like, like just a, like a milder version of, of the longanisa. In a weird way, it's like she stretched out that longanisa. That's what she said. <laughs> I know, it sounds a little perverted there, but man, that shit was good. All right, and that's just like a typical sausage. And if uh, you know, want to look at the historical perspective of that, you know, that's basically a dish that came from Spain and came out here, they reworked it and and bam, before you knew it, they got longanisa. But that's something that's directly, you know, something that comes from Europe, from Spain. Speaking of which, there's a lot of influence out here from Europe, like I've already mentioned before. Not just heavy, heavy Spanish influence, but there's a lot of heavy French influence and a lot of other European influence, but definitely French and Spanish. Now, it's not like New Orleans food out here, but again, it's like another version of that Creole mixture of, uh, again, the Creole from the African slaves, the French cooking cuisine and techniques, the Spanish cooking and, and techniques, the Mayan cooking and techniques, and man, some magic fucking happens, some real magic. So, out here, they got a lot of little things that are uh, like, uh, like pastries that resemble the pastries that we make in Cuba. Or again, just to bring it back a little bit further, the ones that come out of France, so French pastries. So, you know, there's a lot of that here. So you'll find the really good pastries. Now again, guys, you know, the pastries are kind of like hit and miss. You know, there's a lot of pastries out here and a lot of bake shops that are like, wow, to die for, and they make like amazing pastries. And, but at the same time, you know, you, you go to these places and you buy like a, like, a, like a lemon cake or like a key lime pie and you eat that shit and you're like, bro, what the fuck is this? Who made this? You know, you're like, you're pissed. You want to go back and like, you know, kind of give them a, like a lesson on how to make a key lime pie. But again, guys, I mean, you know, you, you can't be perfect and everything. It's just like if you're in Montana and they got all kinds of awesome food and you're asking for tacos and they're fucking giving you Taco Bell. I mean, come on guys, what the fuck you expect, you know? So it's kind of like that, you know what I mean? You gotta, you, we, I, I've realized that I have to be a little bit more lenient when it comes to, to a lot of the, my judgment of the food out here. I just realized I've been recording for 15 freaking minutes. Holy guacamole. By the way, the guacamole out here, just like the rest of Mexico, is beyond amazing. You know why? Because they make it fresh. And you know why? It's Mexicans making you guacamole. Need I say more? Need I say more? Now, I know guacamole is like one of those things, but man, you haven't had guacamole till you had it out here. I, I've never really been a big fan of guacamole till I had it here in Mexico. All right? But anyways, I digress. Now, other stuff. stuff. There's another thing called sopa de lima. Sopa de lima is just like a big bowl of soup like chicken noodle soup, 
only Mexican style, in fact, Yucatecan style, because you're not gonna find this in any, any other part of Mexico, but it, because you, you'll find other things like, you know, frijoles charros, which is just like, you know, beans with meat and all kinds of like goodies in there. But yeah, something like that. You'll find a lot of that in Mexico. You'll find pozole, you'll find menudo, you'll find, and you'll find that here too. But one of the unique dishes out here, there's like a soup dish, is called sopa de lima. And again, it's just, when I had it for the first time, it was just reminding me of home and grandma. This is something that my grandma used to make. Now, the one thing that is very unique different about the Yucatan to the rest of Mexico is that they have a lot of turkey out here. Yeah, I said, yeah, you heard me right, turkey. So there's supposed to, supposedly there's tons of wild turkey all over the Yucatan Peninsula and turkey is like a is like a national dish out here. So pretty much every single thing that you're gonna eat, whether it's sopa de lima, the panuchos, like so many dishes out here, they use turkey instead of chicken. All right, and they'll give you the option, but you know, a lot of times if they don't give you an option or they just give you whatever, you're probably having turkey. And it's because there's an abundance of turkey out here. Yeah, I know, it was uh, surprising to me too. But, um, but yeah, so when you're having a lot of these dishes, turkey is like the main meat, chicken, bird ingredient when it comes to all this. So um, the sopa de lima is another thing that's, wow, you know, phenomenal. You know, but again, you know, in order to really have these dishes correct, you gotta go to a place that's like a hole in the wall that is known for a lot of these things, or you go to a, you know, again, even if you go to one of these five-star restaurants, it's not gonna be the same. You gotta go to the hole in the wall to really get the mm, authentic uh, versions of uh, some of these dishes. Now, the next thing is uh, panuchos. You know, there's these things called panuchos out here that, um, again, they're only very unique to here in the Yucatan Peninsula. What is a panucho? It's literally like a tostada, so you guys know how you guys have the Taco Bell tostada or whatever, or Mexican tostada. But what they do is they put beans on it and then they put um, turkey, they put slices of tomatoes, slices of avocado, um, and they put a bunch of uh, other like pickled onions and then even a little bit of salsa and man, those things are also phenomenal. Okay, so like that's their version of uh, an open, uh, open face taco. It's, it's, it's literally, you eat it, you know, you, you get it like presented like a, like flat, round, uh, you know, um, the fuck was I just saying? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that brain fart. But anyways, a tostada, yeah, sorry, tostada. And then what you do is like when you get it, you just kind of like fold it like a taco and you eat it. Great stuff, amazing stuff. One, another one of my favorite dishes. So, but of all the dishes out here, my all time favorite, 100%, million percent, best favorite dish out here, really, but only when it's done right. And basically, you, you get it the best on Sundays. It's this thing, it, the dish is called, ah, oh, geez, I'm sorry, man. I'm just like speaking so fast today. Let's wrap it up. But anyways, the dish is called Cochinita Pibil. All right, Cochinita Pibil. And literally, I mean, what that translates to is just roast pork. Now, you know, so to me, when I first heard about Cochinita Pibil, and especially after seeing it, I was like, eh, whatever, how good could that be? When I tried it, I was like, holy shit, this shit took me to another level of fucking awesome. And why? Well, because remember, me being Cuban, we eat a lot of pork. We cook a lot of pork. We're pretty much experts in cooking pork. There's a lot of cultures out there that do that, but we're one of them, all right? We're one of these, uh, you know, we're the ones that roast the whole pig whole in, we, we literally stick it in the hole, stick, you know, uh, cook it out in the pit, do the whole thing. So, you know, that's my culture. You know, we're very pork heavy. So. Out here, they're also very pork heavy. And so they have this thing called, called cochinita pibil. And um, yeah, long story short, it's literally almost the same as un pan con lechon, which is something that's a Cuban sandwich, okay? A Cuban dish. It's literally like pan con lechon, only it's a little saucier. They make a little sauce to go with it. And I mean, honestly, I, I really don't taste much of a difference. Um, and it's because that that sauce is made with a chote, which is just something that's like a, it makes the color red, but it's not really a flavoring per se. Um, and that's why it kind of tastes the same. But what is cochinita pibi? Well, they get a pig, they roast it, they roast it until you can pull it apart, you know what I mean? Like it's just pull apart tender. And then they cut it all up, mix it with the fat and the juices, add some onions, Add some lime juice or orange juice, sour orange juice, not regular orange juice, so it's not orange at all. It's more lemony, okay, very sour lemon. Anyways, you mix the, the pork with the onions, the lime juice, a few little spices here and there, put that shit in between some bread, and bam, you're good to go. So our version in Cuba is called 
pan con lechon, which is just, you know, um, again, a pork sandwich, I guess, you know what I mean? Or, you know, uh, yeah, hog sandwich, whatever the hell. That's really how it translates to. But the cochinita pibil, that's their version of it. And man, that's one of my all-time favorite dishes out here. I mean, you can't, and you can have the cochinita pibil in tacos, you can have it in, uh, you know, on its own, you can have it whatever, but my favorite way is to have it in between bread. You know, and, be, and by the way, the bread out here is very similar to the Cuban bread. It's almost, almost like a Cuban bread. It's like a, it's like a mix between Cuban bread and French bread. Again, can't go wrong. Amazing. So they're, even the bread out here is awesome. So they get this really crusty bread that's very soft and tender on the inside. They open that son of a bitch up. They add the pork with all that sauce, some onions, some uh, some some more sauce, and that's it. They close it up, and you're good to go. And they're super cheap. And it's very traditional here that every single Sunday, everyone, you know, as part of their routine of like going to church and doing all the Sunday stuff, is that they gotta go and have their cochinita pibil. You know, their cochinita, that's like their, their, what they eat for Sunday. So everyone that's really Yucatecan has cochinita for, for Sunday. And again, it sounds kind of like a little weird to have like that for breakfast in the morning, but even for me, because you know, we, we, you know, we eat pork, but we don't eat it that early, but man, you know, there's just something about having a little, you know, cochinita pibil for like brunch or for, for breakfast in the morning on a Sunday before you start doing all the Sunday stuff. Man, and for real, that's a real Yucatecan Mexican thing. A uh, real Yucatecan thing, not and, and you know, not necessarily all of Mexico, just a Yucatan, Yucatan, and um, and I think that's it, guys. There's now, there's a lot of other dishes out there, like the papazules. There's a lot of dishes out there, you know, like um, I'm trying to think of some things out there right now. Um, I, I, anyways, I can't really think of uh, other dishes. I should have written more down. All right, but the point is, is that. Sure, there's a few dishes here and there that I might not like. There's a few dishes here and there that maybe you guys as uh, as foreigners might not necessarily like it. it, might not be to your taste or your palate. But you know what guys, the reality is is that Yucatecan cuisine is beyond amazing, okay? Especially if you go to the right places and you definitely gotta have some of these things that I put on my list here. Again, longanisa de Valladolid. But again, just longanisa. Sopa de Lima, panuchos. Cochinita pibil and some ceviche. Okay, ceviche again. You know, you can, you're not gonna have that here in the city. You're gonna have that shit on the beach. But all the others that I mentioned, you definitely gotta have. You gotta, you know, and they have a puerco. You have beans called puerco here, which is just beans and pork and beans. Their version is beyond amazing. And they have so many more other dishes. They got, um, they got this one dish is called, um, damn, I forgot what it is. Something negra, like. Um, so, something whatever so what it is it's like um oh relleno negro it's called relleno negro this is one of these dishes that's like a little bit of an acquired taste but it's beyond delicious okay and um it's just it's uh it's just ch like chicken or pork or some sort of meat it's kind of done like an enchilada and then it's it's uh covered in this sauce that's black like black like this and it's and the, the that black comes from like a they get like a like a pepper or some sort of leaf or something like that and they burn it until they get this ash and then that is what they make you know it's one of the is a base of the ingredients for the sauce to make that uh, relleno negro okay and that's like a very very Yucatecan thing as well I forgot to mention that because again that's not necessarily one of my favorite dishes you know same as you know um, there's a lot of dishes out there like huevos motuleños. There's so many dishes I can go on and on. But at the end of the day, guys, you know, you're gonna have your favorites. I have my favorites. The Yucatecan people have their favorites. But again, I literally had to make one full episode talking about Yucatecan cuisine and, and literally letting you guys know how wrong I was about the food out here. And that, sure, there's a few things that I might not like and a few things that are like, eh, but for the most part, the food out here is beyond amazing, and not only that, but there's a huge, huge European influence out here. And the more I'm getting to know this area in the city, I'm really getting to realize the fact that, again, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of heavy French and Spanish influence, meaning that, you know, and, and Lebanese and uh, um, Arab influence, you know, and so on and so forth. And a lot of influence from a lot of countries out here, you know, Japanese, Korean, you name it. I know things that you would never in a million years even think about. Um, again, even African, you know, the Creole. Um, and all of these put together and they all have their own unique dishes, their own unique, uh, you know, um, restaurants, their own unique food that they've created and developed from generations of living out here. 
and mixing with the Mexican culture and the Yucatecan culture and the things out here. So again, guys, you know, there's so much more to really explore that I have yet to even, you know, um, it's only, I've only hit the, the, the tip of the iceberg and uh, I hope that I, um, you know, that you guys will be joining me in the future as I go to a lot more of these places out here and then get to really show you, um, you know, the awesomeness that is uh, Yucatecan cuisine because again, I'm forgetting and I'm not even talking about so many other things. There's these other things called marquesitas. They're like these big crepes that they put Nutella, they put cheese, and they put like all these other ingredients on there that you get to choose, but basically it's Nutella and cheese. Again, you get to mix and match all kinds of ingredients, so they're just the basic ingredients. So they put Nutella, they put cheese, and then they wrap it up into like a giant cone, into this long cone, and then you eat it like that, and it's like crepe, but it's like a long cone crepe, and again, filled with Nutella and cheese. Can't go wrong with that. Really, it's good. Also, Los Helados Colón. I'm gonna see if I can make a, just literally a video on the Helados Colón because to me, that's literally, it, it, it's not really ice cream, it's like gelato. Again, you already know where they got that influence from and very European, Italian, ice, okay. And, um, and man, to me, it's like the best ice cream, not only out here, but it's probably the best ice cream I've ever had. And it's all fresh, natural. So if you have like guayaba ice cream, it's literally guayaba, sugar, water, that's it, you know what I mean, like whatever. You know, so like, and then they have a whole list of fruit ingredients, I mean, of fruit um, flavors. Um, they got like, um, you know, regular ice cream, you know, like vanilla ice cream, but like again, made fresh. And, and then their versions of uh, old school pastries that, you know, have been in this area for not just 50 years, but probably 100 years and beyond. So, and, and you know, just the desserts and the, that, you know, the whole food culture there is beyond amazing. Some of my favorite is going there. And um, literally a lot of times I'll go to the ice cream shop and like I'll buy like a whole liter of ice cream for $4. Yeah, I know. I try not to do that too much because I'm trying to watch my girlish figure here, okay? But regardless, guys, you know, this place out here in Merida, Mexico, the whole Yucatan, the food out here is beyond amazing. And I know I've said it already like 10 times, but I gotta say it again. I apologize for being so wrong about the food out here. All right, guys. Well, I really hope that this video um, was able to um, shed more light on uh, the whole food situation out here. I hope I was able to make myself right from you know talking uh, some mad shit about the Yucatecan cuisine out here. Because again, guys, you know I, I, the reason I'm making this video is because as I was walking and talking and talking about Yucatecan cuisine the other day, I wasn't very happy when I, you know, look back on it because, you know, yeah, I wasn't happy with some of the food I've had out here, but when I, you know, made the video and I was in retrospect looking back at the whole thing, I was like, man, I was wrong. You know, the food out here is beyond amazing. And uh, I was I was just wrong, you know what I mean? And that's it. I just hope that this video was uh, able to um, redeem me, okay? I was I hope it's uh, very redeeming of me, okay? And I'm gonna try and see if I can add pictures and um, you guys already saw, okay. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I wanna give a shout out to all my patrons, I wanna give a shout out to all my contributors, I wanna give a shout out to every single one of you guys out there that's always, you know, watching, checking me out and helping me in every which way and helping me and Lambo continue being able to make these videos for you guys and for the whole community. Thank you so much, I love you guys. Um, and that's it, I'm cutting it short because I'm running out of time here. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon, and uh, please stay awesome. And if you guys have any questions or comments, you guys have want, any, want me to talk about anything or bring anything up uh, regarding this exact topic, or have any more insight on the food, if you guys are locals, anything like that, please let me know. We can make more videos talking about this, and I uh, would love to continue this conversation. Who doesn't love talking about food, right? Am I right? All right, guys. Thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys manana. Peace. Bon appetit. Hey guys, guess what? Me and Lambo are still here. We haven't left yet. You know why we're here? Because I want to tell you all about this new store that I just opened up. Yeah, that's right. It's our new sponsor as well. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. So, as you guys can see, this is the store. I just opened up the store, I don't know, about a week ago. And um, I'm going to be selling all my merch and all of our stuff here, whether it's Lambo stickers, whether it's, you know, mugs t-shirts, jackets, you name it. We got all kinds of stuff that you guys can buy and um, help support the show. Now you get to have your very own shirt or your very own Lambo sticker. And if you guys want any special request on things for me to put in the store, then please, by all means, let me know and uh, we'll get our graphic artist, you know, on top of it. Yeah, that means you gotta work, Lambo. All right, guys, 
Thank you so much. Love you guys and I'll see you guys manana.